So they ended up finding my nephew's body in a giant egg shell at the bottom of the Mississippi River. And when they pulled him out of that egg shell, he was dressed as a bunny. And legend has it that he still haunts the banks of the Mississippi River looking for blood or eggs or, uh, you know, just revenge. Wow. In general, yes. That's crazy. And that's pretty much the end of my story. You guys ever heard a truly scary story? Uh, maybe. I don't know if you've ever researched my family history. Let me tell you a little story about my great, 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 great uncle, Samuel Wardwell. He lived in Andover, Massachusetts, with his wife, Sarah Hawks, and their seven children. His work as a carpenter, along with Sarah's sizable inheritance, allowed the family to live comfortably on a farm in the southern end of town. Samuel was a bit of an eccentric, known about town for his interest in magic. He was a skilled fortune teller, often reading palms, tarot cards, and tea leaves in the bottoms of cups. Once he predicted that a newlywed couple in Andover would give birth to five daughters before they saw their first son. When his prediction came to pass, the town was shocked. Rumors regarding Samuel's powers began to grow. It was said he could charm animals and make them follow him around, and could control the dreams of others. Most wrote him off as harmless, but the more pious members of the community made sure to avoid him whenever possible. So, was it true? Could he really do all those things? It's a good question. Nobody really knows, but in his day and age, it didn't matter. At that time, even the most innocent dabbling in magic was dangerous. In the winter of 1692, a group of young girls in Salem Village had become afflicted with a strange illness. Symptoms included fevers, frantic movement, painful contortions of the body, and the appearance of frightful images. The cause? Witchcraft. The girls claimed they were being tormented by members of the village who were witches in hiding. The accused were arrested and brought before a court. Some gave confessions, admitting to terrorizing the girls in the name of Satan. Regardless, the hunt was on. The community of Salem was ready to find and hang all those who practiced witchcraft. It wasn't long before Samuel's name had found its way into the commotion, when Martha Sprague of Boxford claimed that he had used his powers to cause her great pain, pinching her and striking her down from afar. He was promptly arrested and charged with witchcraft and sorcery, as well as having made a pact with the devil some 20 years ago. To the surprise of no one, Samuel confessed to his charges. He admitted to bewitching Martha Sprague and confirmed his having supernatural powers. He also admitted to making a pact with the devil. He claimed that one night he witnessed a group of cats congregating behind the house of W. Bradstreet, a sea captain and respected member of the community. One of the cats transformed into a black man. The man called himself the Prince of Air. He told Samuel that if he signed the devil's book, he would one day live the wondrous life of a sea captain, just like Mr. Bradstreet. Samuel who at the time was still reeling from the rejection of a maiden known as Miss Barker, signed the book. A week later, the black man returned, this time to baptize Samuel in the waters of the Shawshank River, confirming his new dedication to Satan. Wow, so it really was a witch. No, 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 not so fast. There's more to the story than that. Soon after confessing, Samuel claimed he had been coerced by his accusers and that he was innocent of any wrongdoing. He knew he was a good, honest man and that he had harmed no one, let alone pledged his allegiance with Satan. Though he had faltered, he was determined to defend what he knew to be the truth, knowing full well he might pay the price with his life.
In the end, his proclamations of innocence fell on deaf ears. On September 22, 1692, Samuel Wardwell was hanged along with seven other convicted witches. As the executioner adjusted his noose, Samuel spoke to the crowd, continuing to deny his guilt. During this time, smoke from the executioner's pipe choked Samuel, causing him to cough violently. It is said that from the crowd, a girl cried out, The devil doth hinder his words. Well, what do you think? Was he a witch or what? Come on guys, you know witches don't exist. Whoa! Whoa way to go! Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> that was weird. So you guys believe in witches now? Thank you.